Our next speaker is an Angela Washko. She's an artist, writer, and facilitator based in the US, where she currently is a visiting assistant professor of art at Carnegie Mellon University. Angela's work revolves around mobilizing communities and creating new forums for discussions of feminism at places where they do not exist or which are frequently hostile, especially toward women. Her interventions, performances, written words and video games about which Angela will talk today in a few minutes have been widely received and are critically acclaimed. Angela's work has been presented in numerous venues such as the LA Museum of Contemporary Art, the Museum of the Moving Image or the Rotterdam International Film Festival. This year she received the Impact Award at Indicate. Her work has been covered by, for instance, Art in America, The Guardian, The New York Times, Time Magazine and many, many more. To sum it up, we are very happy to finally have Angela here at Congress talking about strategies for activism and performance in hostile online environments. Give a warm round of applause for our next speaker, Angela Washburn. Uh, can you hear me all right? Is this working? My Britney Spears headset, I'm very excited about it. Maybe you can't see it because it's invisible. Okay, <laughs> so um, thanks so much to everyone on the Arts and uh, Cultural, Culture Curatorial Committee, that's a lot of C's, um, for inviting me tonight. I'm Angela Washko and I'm a research-based artist and activist making um, video games, written works, performances, and interventions, often within video game and multi-user online environments. I'm also, um, as you heard, upgraded from visiting professor to assistant professor of art at Carnegie Mellon University, so I now fully live in Pittsburgh. Um, so today in my talk, I'm going to focus on uh, my projects investigating uh, niche languages formed in specific online communities and um, my activism-driven feminist interventions into the socio-cultural byproducts of our digital environments. I'll mostly talk about the game the game, a video game I recently finished based on online pickup artist communities and seduction forums. Uh, and we'll also have an audience participatory playthrough of the game at the end of my talk as well. So, participation. Um, I'm laughing a lot, but uh, there's actually some very difficult content in this presentation, and I'll try to give adequate warnings to some of that difficult content when we get to it. Um, but to start, okay. Um, I'm going to start with this particular project to give a sense of what kinds of processes and politics were informing the work that I'll show after it. Um, I started playing the massively multiplayer role-playing video game World of Warcraft in 2006, um, a version of the game that veteran WoW players here might know as Vanilla. Anybody? No, okay. <laughs> or silently just keeping it to themselves, that's fine. Um, after years of playing in competitive guilds and feeling frustrated with how my social experience differed from men I regularly played with, in 2012 I decided to do something about it. I'd become tired of being told to get back in the kitchen and make male player sandwiches, and I'd become incredibly uncomfortable with the number of male players aggressively soliciting me for sexual interactions as soon as they realized I was a woman. After years of working in public performance, grassroots activism, and collective organizing, I thought I could use this background that I had um, and apply it to this virtual public space and directly talk to players about why the community had become so homophobic, misogynistic, and racist in its public communication channels, at least on the US servers that I've been playing on. So, from 2012 to 2016, I created performative interventions inside World of Warcraft. So instead of killing enemies and getting badass equipment like I had for six years prior to its founding, as the Council on Gender Sensitivity and Behavioral Awareness in World of Warcraft, I started traveling to highly populated virtual towns in the game to discuss the ways in which women were treated in the game space with other players. Um, Again, WoW has had a player base that, at the time, and, and I would say still, um, is notorious for being quite hostile toward women, members of the queer community, and people of color. Um, and this was, again, especially true on the servers that I primarily played on. Um, 
In sessions with the council, players came together in these public spaces to discuss inclusivity, entitlement, who gets to ask questions about the community's actions and language, um, harassment, um, why certain marginalized players were treated so poorly in the space, uh, the t feminism, um, why the politics of everyday life ended up so embedded in exchanges in this otherwise fantasy landscape where you can play as orcs, trolls, and um, cows, uh, and so much more. The project shifted in intention from initially wanting to um, completely change the communal language in the space to fit something that um, I, was more affirming to me. Um, but ultimately, I realized that this was also a colonial impulse um, and started shifting toward trying to create a presence and public visibility for the issues of exclusivity that players faced in the space by meeting and talking about it regularly. Um, so we started just kind of literally taking up space and altering the game experience with these um, underrepresented perspectives that were otherwise silenced within the community. Um, the project over time gained a large in-game following, um, and an intentional inclusive guild was created as a part of these discussions on the primary server I operated on. Um, my biggest goal from the start was that this project could create a prototype or set of tactical guidelines for productive, performative um, actions of protest by others in WoW and also other multi-user virtual environments. Um, oh, and if it wasn't clear, this is some um, video documentation from one of the meetings of the council. Um, this is sort of a fast description of the project. Um, there's a whole lot of nuance and a lot of self-criticality missing. Um, if you are interested in some of those elements and some of the background and, and politics and process from the project, um, I wrote an essay called uh, Why Talk Feminism in World of Warcraft, um, which also has a lot of uh, video documentation from the project as well and it's available widely online. Writing is a big part of my practice, so every project I do usually has some kind of written component along with it. So, um, in the midst of that long-term project, I started another one, uh, which was also focused on facilitating dialogue um, within niche internet communities that are not inclusive to women and bringing together um, very disparate perspectives. Um, so starting in 2014, I became interested in a figure named Rushvi. Um, his writing and his ideology started coming up during conversations with WoW players who identified themselves to me as men's rights activists or members of the Manosphere. In case you're not familiar, Rush V is a professional pickup artist, or now he's sort of reframed himself as a professional seduction coach. Um, but he's been called the most infamous misogynist on the internet, um, and he has a lot of competition for that title, as you might know. Um, thanks. Uh, <laughs> Rushvi spends his time traveling around the world, teaching men how to perform in particular ways in order of sex with as many women as possible across geographic, language, and cultural barriers as quickly as possible. He writes a series of seduction-centric travel guides called Bang, Day Bang, Bang Iceland, Bang Poland, and so on. Um, one of his community fans made this image, not me. Um, after reading so much of his writing for his devoted community of followers, one thing really stuck out to me. In Rusha's accounts of his sexual exploits, the perspectives of the women he's explicitly talking about in great detail in his books and blogs are never represented. So I decided that I wanted to create a web and book project through which I'd hope to give um, the potentially hundreds of women Rushvi's had sexual exchanges with using the extremely aggressive strategies outlined in his books and blogs an opportunity to anonymously report their experiences. After pursuing mainstream media distribution of my call for these women, it occurred to me that Rush knew about my project as he wrote about it on his Twitter account. His awareness of the project changed it for me. He became less of this sort of abstract villain that I was free to run a smear campaign on and more of a complex person and more of a subject. I decided that I should stop mimicking the shock media tactics that his own community would use for definitely different ideological purposes, but still, um, and move toward investigating further into actually trying to understand the tactics within his community, his personal motivations, and the appeal that he and his practice held for his growing community of followers, and ideally come up with systems to um, respond to it. 
Um, and many of this community of followers uh, later became what's politically called um, the alt-right or part of it. So I pursued getting Rushvi to do an interview with me via Skype. This took months of email negotiating. Um, the video interview ended up being um, unintentionally two hours long and um, was very exhausting. Um, I'm going to play two short clips from the interview to give you a sense of what it was like. Um, I will say there is some sexually explicit uh, talk in this clip, so um, if you're uncomfortable with hearing uh, Bruce V talk about female orgasms, um, now would be the time to leave, because he will. Okay. <laughs> So I just want to go to have the lowest possible expectations. So <laughs> have to say, well, I don't want to try. So it's actually a blessing and a curse to be good in bed. But I'm not. So. You mentioned your, your orgasm is of primary importance and yeah, that right. you don't go down on women. Right. That's true. <laughs> 
Can I ask uh, why? Because <laughs> uh, nature has deemed the male orgasm to be more important. If, the, if right now a magic cloud of gas surrounds the earth and infected girls and prevented them from ever having a female orgasm again, the human species would go on still. But if this cloud of gas only affected men and prevented the male orgasm, what would happen? The human species is done. It is freaking done. Therefore, nature, not me, nature has the the uh, declare that the male orgasm is essential to life, <laughs> to life. But the female orgasm is like a cherry on top. You know, if she gets it, hey, that's great, mm, yummy. But if not, it doesn't matter. So I'm just, I, I believe in what nature has, has said about it. Oh, the things that have been said in defense of nature. Um. <laughs> Uh, what is it? The Xenofeminist Manifesto, if nature is unjust, change nature. Sorry, okay. An aside. So um, the text in this video uh, is from one of the many emails that I got nearly daily over the course of this project from Rusha's community members. Um, the project ended up taking a lot of unusual ter uh, turns and a lot of unusual forms. Um, Roosh was initially enthusiastic about my search on the project in general, um, likely because of the media attention it gave him, um, something which I started to feel quite uncomfortable about. Um, however, he and his community became increasingly frustrated over time that the media still had an overall negative view of Roosh, despite me posting an unedited two-hour-long interview with him in mainstream media. His community began to harass me and additionally sent me rape and death threats over email, social media, comment sections of mainstream news sites, and a massive and still ongoing comment thread on the Rouge V community forum. Um, and additionally wrote threatening statements to collaborators, employers, friends, peers, and colleagues in an attempt to discredit what I was doing. Um, and I'm not talking about this issue to play up a victim narrative as I recognize myself as an artist with agency who started this whole thing, um, but as a perform performer who had seen real impact on the space in World of Warcraft as a result of my actions as the council, I naively applied some of the same logic and strategies to this project without re realizing the primary difference in my position in these two spaces. In World of Warcraft, I was recognizable as a long-term, high-level member of the community with high-level gear, only obtained through years of commitment to the game. Clearly a participant and not an outsider. Um, by virtue of just being myself on the baseline, a, a woman with a job, uh, I was always going to be an outsider um, in the manosphere that I was going into. Here, we'll let this uh, play out for a second. Um, if you're not familiar with the acronym WNB, that's would not bang. So, thanks, M. All right. Um, so, uh, normally I say more about this, but um, if you do end up trying to follow me on Twitter, you might find that my account is now private. This is all um, related to this, and now you know. Um, but I'm sure that all of you will make it through my vetting process. So, follow. Okay. Um, so toward the end of this bang project, my individual pursuit of this somewhat Sisyphusian exchange with Rushvi and the online Manosphere community felt riddled with the symptoms of the artist as hero slash savior complex, perhaps internalized from formative years spent working for male tactical media artists who I admire, like the Yes Men. I became more and more critical of my own processes and instead of ignoring the blind spots, I 
decided to fold them into the project, acknowledging them in a variety of project manifestations, including multimedia storytelling performances, art installations, videos, an interactive dungeon crawler video game, and quite a lot of writing. Um, and this shift in politics and self-criticality led directly into the research and form for the game The Game. Toward the end of the Bang project, something I felt was getting in the way of the work was my, my own performance role. The project became very much about my personal experience operating in the field. Um, despite my somewhat bad experience, I haven't abandoned this field, as you'll see in this project. I'm just putting myself out of the spotlight and making the project less about my personal mediation of and intervention into this space, and more about creating an embodied way for people to digest experiences from and ideolog ideologies of these manosphere seduction communities. There's so much information, so many micro-communities, micro and a lot of inaccessible lingo in this field, and a lot of the tactical information is very painful to process, especially if you're a woman. And so with all of the experience I now have mapping this field, as a researcher, I felt like I was able to put myself in the position to filter it all into a game scenario so that one might actually walk away being able to make sense of it without having to spend as much time as I have and potentially develop strategies to respond to it. Um, so this brings me to the game, the game, um, which we'll play through together in a moment, at least part of it. Um, after the Bang Project, followers of other seduction gurus reached out to me to tell me that Roosh V's variety of pickup art was much more extreme and much more misogynistic than other types that they argued were more focused on teaching men self-confidence, um, encouraging them to pursue self-improvement to help level the dating playing field. I thought that this was a valid point and that something like this should exist. Um, so I decided to take a deeper look into the variety of pickup artist gurus or professional seduction coaches and the differences between the types of pickup art they're teaching and then ultimately make a playable experience or video game about them. Um, I'm just gonna say the, the rest of this talk on, there are um, definitely mentions of practices that look like sexual assault and definitely evidence of non-consensual behavior. Um, so if you're sensitive to or have experienced trauma around these things and wanna leave at any time, um, I won't be offended at all and I completely understand. Um, so the project's title, The Game, The Game, is a play on the best-selling book by Neil Strauss, The Game, um, which was the first mainstream um, primer into this world, which originated as a couple of guys with a Web 1.0 online community forum sharing tips with each other on how to pick up women and ultimately turned into a, seduc sorry, a lucrative seduction coaching lifestyle for some. Um, so I made sort of a playable version of, um, of the game, but looking at the entire field um, and also the field as it's emerged today in more recent um, internet technology. Um, so not just the pickup artist represented in that book. In developing the game, the game, I present the different seduction techniques of famous pickup artists and allow those pickup artists to speak for themselves through their work and put players into the situation of interacting with them in the most common location for pickup art a bar. Players, regardless of personal gender identity, are put into the position of experiencing a common scenario that femme presenting people experience, having their personal space invaded when it's unwelcome by men who feel entitled to it. The first pickup artist you encounter in the game, uh, the game, the game, is Julian, who is designed primarily from research material from infamous pickup artist Julian Blanc's first major multi-DVD training program, Pimp. Um, this is what the program costs today now at a drastically reduced price. All of the dialogue by the pickup artists in this game is constructed from their actual word for word advice written by these pickup artists in their books, websites, um, DVD programs, and video conferences. And also situations from their own hidden camera footage that they sell to their devoted followers online. A lot of these coaching materials are prohibitively expensive and not available in full online. I hypothesize that this is not only to make a bunch of money off of them, but also to keep people who aren't looking to learn from them from finding out about them. Um, but I got some grants, so I bought so many of them. Um, so, thanks, university. Um, anyway, I really mean that, but anyway. 
Um, I'm going to show an example of an excerpt from one of Julianne Blanc's videos, including an infield hidden camera um, video. Uh, I'm just, again, going to give a little bit of a warning about this. Um, it's not graphic. Um, it's not overtly um, sexual or pornographic. It's just um, disturbing, non-consensual behavior. Um, so I'm just going to put that out there. Um, so this is a short excerpt um, from Pimp. So when I'm like, you know what, it's after party, let's go, I'm going to throw in the word now. Okay, I'm like, you know what, after party, now. Boom, and I would order and command now. Now. Okay, listen, you don't have to if you don't want to, but let's go now. Okay, we get along right, after party, now, adventure, now, let's go, now, this second, now, this second, now. Okay, I'm going to hammer that shit in. I'll also do like, you know what, after party, because otherwise I have to go. AKA, it has to happen now. Okay, so keep that in mind. Take the responsibility off of the girl and create a sense of urgency. Take me by a real quick. No, we're done. I'll never see you again. No, no, no. Look, but Julian is. Uh, yeah, she's like, hey, we have so much in common. Why do we have in common? What do you mean? Pleasure to meet you. We're just like, shh, let's just remember. Erica, she won't see. I'll hide it. I have massive shoulders. She won't see. Get out of town. That's what she said. Okay, real fast, real fast. A real kiss, not she? You're crazy. She's gone. Okay, we already kissed. It's too late. Give her a real kiss. Redem You're Redemption. Crazy. It's like a video game. Redemption. Are you going to cheat on a shitty kiss? No. That's Why? a good point. Am I going to cheat on a shitty kiss? You already kiss? cheated. You already That's cheated. So you cheated yeah. on a fiance on a shitty kiss. Is that really what you want? Where Two minutes. Where did you guys come Wait. from? Can I just hug you about? I'll hug you about. You can give me a hug, goodbye. okay? Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, kiss me up. No, 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 no. Kelsey's my friend's talking to her. So this pretty much covers, you know, like aligning the emotional side of her brain with the logical side of her brain. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so. I showed that video to illustrate that this moment presented in Julian's hidden camera footage is represented in the game. As a player, if you continue to engage with him to the point that you end up outside of the bar and are invited to leave the venue with him, even when you push back, you may be physically moved around and touched sexually without your consent. Um, this is not me inventing what Julian is like in any way, but presenting him and his behaviors in the way that he has presented them himself and has suggested them as a template for his many hundreds of thousands of online fans to follow. Um, it's really important that in the context of um, this DVD program, this, this is packaged as a success. This, is a, this, is a, um, this was a good interaction. This is um, you know, proof that this kind of practice works. Um, so if you can imagine the many hundreds of thousands of, of people that are, that are following this practice, um, you know, it's, it's not a great feeling, especially if you've had experiences that um, resonate with this. Um, this dedication to accurately representing the strategies and language of each pickup artist is also why the game the game took three and a half years to make. Um, just some images. Um, after each interaction in the game, you're prompted with a series of options. Um, generally, the options include a tonal range from um, being enthusiastic or going along with it, to being snarky, to being polite, um, to resorting to being aggressive in your rejection. Each option results in a different outcome, illustrating how the pickup artist has described ways of handling the different ways that um, women respond to them. Each pickup artist handles rejection and uh, women's attitudes differently. Um, for example, and this is a bit of a spoiler alert, um, <laughs> But if you play through, you'll notice that Julian will persist until you physically push him away. So as we play through together, if you, um, if you want Julian to go away, um, as soon as you uh, physically push him away, he will. So um, as a safety for, for all of you playing through, um, that's a way to get him away. Uh, whereas even the slightest hint of attitude or confidence will signal to Luke uh, that you aren't submissive and therefore aren't worth his time and he'll leave you immediately. Um, and Rushvi is called Luke in this game because he was 
caught by talk show hosts in Russia using a pseudonym name of Luke, so I honored that in my game. Um, structurally, the game the game follows the mystery method M3 model, originally designed by Eric von Markovic, a pickup artist also known as Mystery. So all of the pickup artists in the game the game have adopted Mystery's M3 model in their own practices and coaching materials, and they've each tweaked it a bit to establish their own brand on it and then sell it. Um, this diagram um, is breaks down the model, um, and I'll talk about it a little bit so you can um, understand how it guides the game's timeline when we play it. So broken into three stages, attract, comfort, and seduce, this model outlines a pickup art hypothesis of structurally what needs to happen for a successful conquest to take place. So in the game, the game, the attract phase includes pickup lines and a quickly establishing the pickup artist's quirky general vibe. Um, also, during the attract phase, they do value demonstrations by showing how un unimpressed they are by their targets. So this is also known as something you may have heard of called negging. Um, and also providing proof from other people in the room that they're socially valuable. So finding a stereotypically attractive woman in the room and um, establishing that they know them somehow. Um, the pickup artist then waits um, for their target, this is their language, um, or the woman, uh, to show an indicator of interest. In their world, this means touching their hair, making sustained eye contact, starting to initiate conversation rather than just answering the pickup artist's questions, um, being receptive to being touched by the pickup artist, um, and ignoring their friends to talk to the pickup artist, things like this. After that, the pickup artist will try to move into the comfort stage by physically isolating their target. So, moving them away from their friends to a farther part of the bar, sometimes even physically, um, convincing them to go to a different location with them, like another bar, a diner, um, or a made-up after party that just ends up being their house, um, and starting to physically connect. Um, via a term that they call kino, um, which basically just means repetitive touching that becomes more sexual in nature over time. So moving from a shoulder touch to hugging to hand holding to kissing and so on. Um, after they've isolated their target in a comfort building location, um, they attempt to bounce them to the sex location, um, which could be their place, their target's home, a bathroom, a vehicle, etc., and then the final stages of seduction occur. A very large amount of pickup artist writing is devoted to overcoming what they call last minute resistance, which is basically the moment in a sexual exchange when the target says they aren't comfortable with what's happening, aka a clear no. Um, each pickup artist has their own strategy for getting past that moment and plowing through to sexual intercourse. So following the structure as a player and as a target of pickup artist attention, you can make a broad range of decisions in the game the game. From opting to hook up with different pickup artists in multiple locations to attempting to get away from them immediately. In constructing the game, I didn't want to make the point necessarily escape, and I hope that players, if they aren't traumatized by it, do experiment with seeing what a successful conquest looks like from the perspective of each of the pickup artists. Um, the game never slut shames the player by any means and also allows you to turn the tables and pursue the pickup artist yourself. Um, I've tried to depict not only the breadth of the field of pickup art in the game, but also the extent to which each of these gurus copy their moves from each other, highlighting how community based and internet driven the men's seduction field is. Each pickup artist has his, on, his own online community forum where participants share their experiences using the strategies proposed by these pickup artists. Um, so here you have the old, my TV is working, but we could use the computer in my bedroom routine. And then you have Julian's version, um, which involves a Vampire Diaries video you should see. Um, and Mystery, or Eric von Markovic's version, which is, I wanted to show you something in Google Earth. Um, which does maybe date this a little bit. Um, but yeah, as you play through more and more exchanges and interact with more and more pickup artists, it becomes clear that each pickup artist is really building off of the content of another one's materials and tweaking them. Um, the game was made from hundreds of handmade and digitally manipulated cyanotypes. You can 
see some here. Um, this is what it looks like when they're combined and altered uh, digitally and then put into Python and RenPy. I really wanted the game to have a feel to it that was consistent with the emotional and psychological weight of the experience. So I brought back some of my background in more um, traditional art process processes rather than employing the all digital sprite based RPG look I originally planned. Um, also, the band Shu Shu composed the soundtrack to the game The Game, so it has this dark and intense musical score, um, which I think enhances the tense, claustrophobic nature of a lot of the interactions and environments, which you'll get to hear in a minute. Um, it's been shown primarily in art exhibition and festival context at this point, um, but the goal has always been um, widespread online distribution through a platform like Steam, um, which is still um, in the works. Um, and I also want to say, <laughs> despite the heavy way I've described the work, um, it's actually also at times quite funny. Um, for example, Julian is obsessed with Twilight and the Vampire Diaries series, and a great deal of his pickup lines are vampire-oriented. <laughs> and Roosh has this odd story he tells about living off the land and growing only butter, lettuce, and organic watermelons. Um, it's important to me that the game doesn't just highlight the danger embedded in these scenarios, which I think it definitely does, but also the absurdity of some of the tactics as well. The game gives you an opportunity to slow down these practices and examine them closely, something one definitely cannot do when they're experiencing them in an actual bar. I frame the field in this heavy way for my talk because sometimes this field seems easy to dismiss as not real. And when I talk about the field and the work, I wanted to share with you some of the gravity of it by seeing it in practice. I'm interested in exploring the complexity of these spaces and not flattening them or oversimplifying them in the way that mainstream media does, and instead mapping them out and making their complexities more accessible. By making these pickup art practices an embodied experience and putting players into the position of making decisions and walking through interactions, I think there are insights to be gained that wouldn't be gained by, for example, writing a novel about the field. The game comes in at 97,000 words, and if you played through every possible scenario, it's the length of a 400-page book. So maybe that was an option. <laughs> But um, for me, there's something important about being put into the position of experiencing these practices rather than reading about them from a distance. Um, this is how I'm thinking about tactical embodiment, which was also the title of this talk. A strategy of positioning players into an embodied experience that may give them knowledge about this male seduction field by moving through them in a way um, through which it will sink in differently than um, reading about it in the abstract. I think that understanding these practices and why they're so appealing and perceived as ne a necessary antidote um, for so many men is instrumental in trying to dismantle them. There's a lucrative industry devoted to providing men with answers on how to get women to interact with them. Unfortunately, many of these pickup artists have a monopoly on providing these answers as they strategically market their products on online bodybuilding forums and men's self-improvement sites, knowing where to find these desperate clients who they then bleed dry while promising quick results. Uh, these pickup artist practices fundamentally disregard consent and women's agency and also rely on very outdated ideas around biological determinism, making assumptions about what women are naturally like that undermine the wide spectrum of ways that people present, live, and perform. Okay, so now I'm done with the talking part. We're going to play through it together, and I'm going to walk you through, uh, I think I have hopefully 15 minutes um, to walk through this. Oh, yeah, nice. You have just held up a 15. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to set my timer for 15 min minutes, and then I'm going to um, load up the game the game for us. Um, and again, if, uh, we won't really get to um, play through any of the truly um, sexually explicit scenarios. So, um, And I already gave you some hints on how to avoid Julian Blanc, so um, there's that. Okay, timer, okay. I'll actually make it a little shorter. We'll do like 13 minutes, okay. Gonna open it up. One second. I have to duplicate my display. Don't look at my desktop. <laughs> okay, cool. <clears throat> yeah. 
Here we go. <laughs> it's gonna happen. All right. Mm. I'm just gonna check the preferences really quick. So this is the Shoo Shoo soundtrack that you're hearing. Um, already setting you up. I'm gonna turn it down a little so I can talk over it. Okay. It's dramatic. Okay. Okay. So, um, the game right away opens with a, um, a, a little bit of a, some context to help you understand what you're about to get into. I never want somebody to play this um, without uh, some idea of, of what they're going into. So. Um, so how we're going to play this together, I, when we get to a sort of branching narrative point like this, I'm going to say one, two, or three, and then all of you are going to yell out, thank you for deciding to continue this experience. That would have been really anticlimactic if we didn't. Okay, um, so and just yell out if I'm going clicking through a little too fast. One or two? Oh, no. Oh, steam. Oh, that's embarrassing. How many embarrassing things can happen to me in a talk tonight? Okay. <laughs> One or two? One. Thank you. One, two, three, or four? I heard some very enthusiastic threes. It's that kind of night. And this section is really to help you understand the interface and how to play in a certain way. One, two, three, or four. I heard a lot of four. One, two, or three. One, two, three, or four? Four. One, two, three, or four? Three. One, two, three, or four? Four. <laughs> 
One, two, three, or four? Two, okay. <laughs> One, two, three, or four? Two. <laughs> One, two, or three? All right, three. <laughs> One or two? One, two, three, four, or five? five. That was pretty unanimous. <laughs> One, two, or three? I heard a lot of three.
two, three, four, or five? One. Okay. One, two, three, or four. One, two, three, four, or five. One, two, three, four, or five. Three. One, two, three, or four? Four. <laughs> One, two, three, or four? Time's up. That's not really working. I thought it would. No. Okay. <laughs> um, thanks for playing. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is no time for the Q and A's, but you will be here, I guess. Yeah, all right. Okay, let's give another warm round of applause for our speaker, Angela Washko.